And the secondary comes out at the ECU 30. And Walker had Robbie Anderson wide open, cutting across the field and never saw it. Pass into first. Defense, number 28. Automatic first down. Well, Josh Hawkins, one of the seniors on that defense for ECU, called for the pass interference. Yeah, the crowd doesn't like it. I don't necessarily like it myself. That ball was way overthrown. So the penalty spots the ball all the way up at the 44-yard line of East Carolina. First down, Temple. Walker throws out to Adonis Jennings, the tight end, out of bounds at the 41-yard line. He picks up about three or four. Trayvon Simmons running him out. Well, here comes Jahan Thomas, so the academic punishment lasted a couple of plays. Not surprising. Uh, you know, it happened previously in their game against Tulane, and he missed the first couple of series. Second down and six. Walker gives to Thomas. Montese Overton has really played well for ECU in recent weeks. Now a late flag comes out after a gain of three. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number 99. 15 first well, that's one of the defensive ends. Fred Presley called for the personal foul, and that's two major penalties against ECU on this drive. And Presley tried to plead his case, but the umpire is not hearing it, not having any of it. That's Nicholas Hergine, the umpire tonight. And so far, it's been all pirate penalties that is moving Temple down the field. Gives the Owls a first down at the 22-yard line of ECU. Gardner the back. And he's met at the 20 by Montese Overton. P.J. Walker, that is, the quarterback for a gain of a couple. And that is one thing that Matt Rule spoke about, as did Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator. They're going to get P.J. Walker involved in the run game a little bit more. And when you do that, uh, you'd like to do it particularly in this area of the field down in the red zone where things shrink and it gives you an extra hat to block. Thomas the back on second down and eight. And the Pirates 20. In motion, the fullback Felton. Swung out to Thomas. He avoids one tackler, then finds the sideline, and he's brought down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. By Giannis Bowden, a gain of six. They had a chance to get him, though. Yeah, Deshaun Amos had a shot at him in the backfield. He read the play, came up, and just basically whiffs on midair. But I'm amazed at Thomas's ability to make the catch and then make the move. He had to have one eye on Amos and the other on the ball to make that play. Third and short, third down and two. The drive that began at the Temple 41, but has been aided by a couple of big penalties against the Pirates. Walker hands off to Thomas, makes a spin move and has the first down, keeps the legs moving inside the 10, wrapped up by Trayvon Simmons, and it will be first and goal Owls. That's a perfect example of the quickness and the vision of Jahat Thomas. He does that little hop step that you see backs do, keeping both feet close to the ground, and then finding a crack and getting up in there. That was a pretty nice little run there. He could have stopped in the backfield now, two plays in a row. Almost got stripped to the football, but hung on. First and goal from just inside the 10. Walker gives to Thomas. He's bumped down right near the line of scrimmage by Zeke. Bigger, the impressive senior middle linebacker, no game. And Bigger's an outstanding football player. He's got a real knack for getting up in there and finding the ball carrier and meeting him at the pass. That's so important when you, you're playing a linebacker. It's almost like you're a running back without the football trying to find the hole. And Biggers does a great job of it. 
Bigger with his team leading 59th tackle of the season. Looking towards the end zone. Throws it underneath. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of John Christopher. And that was good patience by P.J. Walker sitting in there and finding a little bit of space in the pocket to make the throw. And that should have been caught by Christopher as Walker got it through a little window there. Eighth play of the drive coming up here. This is where Temple likes to get a little tricky. Uh, not often do they do it, but when they do, it's always down in this area of the field. Third and goal in motion is Shippen. Walker being pressured, avoids one. Avoids being tripped up, runs out of bounds at around the 12. Montice Overton had an opportunity to get him in the backfield, but they still run him out and will they'll settle for a field goal attempt. Walker is going to try and uh, escape initially. It's great coverage down the field. You got a free blitzer coming, and that should have been a sack by Overton, who leads this team with seven and a half sacks. But Walker proved to be too quick, and he got out of there and salvaged this opportunity for field goal. 29 yard attempt for Austin Jones, who's eight of nine this year, as long as 40 near the left hash and out of the hole to Tom Bradway. Jones having a much better season. Gets it away and good. So Temple does settle for the three points, but they score first. The 6-0 Temple Owls score first tonight here in Greenville. Just over five minutes gone here in the first quarter from Greenville, North Carolina. And this huge matchup in the American Athletic Conference. Temple trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. I like what Matt Rule does and the way the whole way he runs his program. He's all about hard work, hard nose, physical, tough style football, and he gets into it and, and fights for his team. And uh, it, he's an up and coming coach. Mark that Temple will be fortunate, I think, to hold on to. He's done a tremendous job. Just 40 years old, ninth youngest head coach of the FBS. Johnson this time from about four yards deep will take a knee. The Temple comes into this game ranked 22nd. And a big match for them on the road. First time they've been ranked since 1979. Which, by the way, Matt Rule was four years old <laughs> when I was Temple a, was ranked last. I was a senior in high school. So. Well, Ruff and McNeil. From what we heard down below, from what Quint told us, he thought his team was just a bit too emotional on that first defensive drive. Yeah, you could see it. The, the way they were flying around, they got a couple of penalties for you know, a little extracurricular stuff and the missed tackles. Uh, I'm fairly certain they will settle in and play a lot cleaner as this thing goes on. First possession for ECU was a three and out and lost a yard. Low snap. Summers picks it up. He's going to run it himself. Just kind of get pushed forward. All the way across the 30. Hassan Reddick and others eventually making the tackle, but he was initially hit about a yard past the line of scrimmage, Ray, and that goes for six. And that shows you the power that he has in that six foot three, 210 pound frame. And it also was indicative of Reddick trying to rip the ball out rather than make a tackle. And when you're the first guy there, you got to get the tackle. Let the next guy get the football. Summers looking to throw, but then flushed out to run again. And it looks like he'll have a first down. Be very close to it. Or he's tackled by Delvin Randall and Jared Alwan. Let's check in down below again with Quint. Ruffin, Ruffin McNeil trying to get his team to settle down. You've seen it. His emotion uh, manifests itself in penalties, missed tackles, and a little jitters on offense. Meanwhile, Temple, all businesslike in their approach. You thanks. Here's Summers. He's sacked. Back at the 30. Tyler Batikevich. 
And this is just a simple blitz from Matikevich. He's just going to come around the outside to the left and not be picked up whatsoever. And this is as easy of a sack as a guy can make. And he, his partner also came in there, Alwan, to eat up the blocker for him. Fourth sack of the year for Matikevich. His team leading seventh tackle for loss. As that lost five, Summers, long pass across the field, caught by Brandon Bishop. He tackled at the 44-yard line. That's going to be just a couple yards shy of the first down. And that showed you the strength of James Summers' arm because he threw that from the middle of the field all the way to the sideline on a rope while taking another hit. And that, that shows you he's a strong kid in there, no doubt about it. Third down and two after a gain of 13. Temple in a three-man front, expecting a pass by the looks of it. They bring five, and there's the run for the first down. Summers all the way to the Temple 46, tackled by Sean Chandler. Gain of 10. And this is so hard on a defense when you have a quarterback who is a running threat. And they line up in a passing formation. And he had the blitz coming. It crossed his face. He pulled it down and found uh, room to run. Summers gives it up this time. This is Sean Furlow, a freshman from here in Greenville, North Carolina, at South Central High School. No gain. Adikevich, another tackle. Yeah, he's the leading active career tackler in the NCAA is Matikevich. And I love watching good linebackers play. He's got an extra sense. Uh, I, I think it, a lot of it comes from watching film and understanding what offenses do. But he does things that uh, turn out good that are really unexplainable. Now 409 career tackles for Matikevich in trouble. Summers using those legs to roll out to the far side. <laughs> and all that gets him to the 43-yard line. And a late flag after a gain of three. Another tackle by Matikevich, but Nate D. Smith play, missed him. Personal foul. Late hit. Offense, number 65. 15-yard penalty. Third down. And that's J.T. Boyd, the right guard. And as, as Quint told us, Mark, uh, East Carolina is a little bit ramped up, uh, too over-ramped. They have to settle themselves down, and, I mean, th that's just uh, a silly, silly mistake. Third 15-yard penalty already tonight against ECU, and we still have 6.18 to play in the first quarter. That pushes them all the way back to their own 43-yard line. Drive killer. Summers hands off. Chris Hairston. Another flag is down, though. Hairston up to the Temple 45, tackled by Nate L. Smith. I think they're going to be another one on the Pirates. 73. 10-yard penalty, third down. That's on the center, Christian Matau. And right now, Ray, ECU can't get out of their own way. And they can't afford to beat themselves in this manner. They, they're going to have their hands full uh, taking on Temple and trying to beat them, let alone uh, deal with their own mistakes, which have just, I mean, it gave them, it gave Temple three points. Uh, that first drive, Temple didn't do anything. East Carolina shot themselves in the foot. Then they got across actually penetrated the 40-yard line, and now they're back at their own 33 after a couple of penalties. It's just not rough and McNeil-style football. Handed off to Hairston. Trying to clear a little more room out to the 41 for praise Martin Abuike at the stop. And it'll be fourth down in time to punt. For ECU and the crowd is kind of getting on the officials, but each of these calls have been warranted. It's really a discipline issue, and as Quint said, uh, selfishness by these Pirates. They got to start playing smarter football if they're going to have a chance. Second punt of the night for Worth Gregory. Sean Chandler at the Temple 15. Fair catch called for by Chandler that he takes at the 17-yard line. That's a 42-yard punt for Gregory with no return. Temple scored three on their first possession. Number two comes up next.
Brought to you by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and AT&T, mobilizing your world. Well, these teams last year met at Philadelphia, gave Temple won 20 to 10. It was ECU that came in as the ranked team. But ECU turned it over five times, even though the Pirates outgained Temple in that game, 428 yards to 135. They lost by 10. And Ray, the ECU players and coaches did not want to mention the R word this week, revenge. Yeah, and I, I like that approach. Everybody knows what happened on this ECU squad. You don't have to point and focus to those things. It's all about the next game and getting the win. Inside handoff, and this is Kip Patton, the tight end, who carries it up towards the 25-yard line, brought down by Trayvon Simmons. Well, one thing East Carolina is doing tonight, playing a little more odd front and having outside linebackers. They're trying to stop Jahad Thomas from his bounce-out ability. He's one of the best bounce-out backs in the country, and they are playing extra tough on the edges to try and eliminate that. Walker hands off to Thomas. Not much there. Maybe a yard. Giannis Bowden, weak side linebacker with the tackle. And, and Bowden has come in and done a great job. He's earned his way into a starting position. And the kid's a football player. He's got a knack for just winding his way, wending his way through traffic to make tackles just like he did on that last play. Third short, third down and two for the Owls. Nick Sharga in there is the fullback for Thomas to hand off to Jahad Thomas. Run and left, but he's hit in the backfield and thrown for a loss. Back at the 20 by Fred Presley. And that play was made. Presley made the tackle, but it was Montes Overton who really makes the play because he's going to contain this thing. Thomas wanted to bounce it outside, but it was not there. All he could see was purple. You saw Overton had the leverage, and it wasn't there. Thomas had to try to double back, and that's when Presley showed up to ruin his evening. Presley, who's a former walk-on, one of the many former walk-ons that are now scholarship on Ruffin McNeil's Pirates roster. Five rushes for only six yards tonight for Thomas, and a whistle and a flag at the snap here. Might not have got it off soon enough there, Mark. False start. Offense, number 37. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Either way, it's going to cost him five yards. Yeah, Boye Aromare got the early start. As East Carolina has uh, talked about going after punts as well tonight. I would I would be, I would not be, I should say, surprised if we get a blocked punt here son, at some point tonight. Quay Johnson standing in his own 35 with... Alex Starzik punting for the first time for the Owls. Gets a good boot away coming to the near side, backing up, taking it to 26 by Johnson. Far side, turns the corner, 45, a flag laying at midfield, and he's out of bounds there. But the flag's laying on the near side. Doing the return, illegal block of the back. Receiving team, number 55, 10-yard penalty, first down. Timeout. The 55 yard punt with a 26 yard return, but ECU penalized for a fifth time already tonight. Saturday on ABC, it's college football presented by Kate Jewelers. Sixth rank and unbeaten Clemson squares off against the Canes. And then on Saturday night football presented by Walmart. Number one, Ohio State takes on Rutgers. It's Clemson, Miami, and Noon Eastern. Then Ohio State, Rutgers at 8 on ABC and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Blake Kemp has checked in at quarterback, Mark. And we're going to see if he can get things going. Maybe settle this team down. They've been their own worst enemy in terms of all the penalties tonight. And right now, ECU has more penalty yards than total yardage. So we'll see how Kemp fares. First play gives it. Hairston down the middle of the field 30 25 brought down near the 20 Run down by Alex Wells and Nate L. Smith A long run for Hairston of 39 yards yeah, And you don't see this very often against this Temple defense Which is number eight in the country in terms of uh, run defense 
allowing just 91.7 yards a game. And Harrison kind of splashed on the scene in the game against Temple last year. Kemp throws across the middle. The catch made, but then immediately dropped there is Isaiah Jones. A gain of five with that catch. Jones is first of the night, so he now has a streak of 31 consecutive games with a graph. Well, he'll remember that one because Avery Williams put a good pop on him. Like some movement on that far side. A shot towards the end zone. A little jump ball incomplete for Jones right near the pylon. It did Kemp think he had a free play there? I believe he did. The crowd certainly did. And uh, I don't know. Jacob Martin definitely was into the neutral zone. But the uh, line judge over there thought he got back far enough. He was looking right at it. He was on that hash. And apparently Martin got back in time. So they did not throw a flag. And it makes it a third down and five. Kemp standing tall, but now he's in trouble. Sack back at the 24-yard line by Avery Robinson. And it was Reddick who really made the play, number 58. He got around the edge and forced Kemp up into the pocket. And that's where Robinson was waiting for him. See that right side, and that's just a really good speed rush by Reddick, who was only 225 pounds. That's an interesting thing Temple does, Mark, with the defensive ends. They're smaller, faster guys who run the hoop around the edge. Davis Plowman's long this year is 41 yards. This is a 40-yard attempt. Has the distance, but wide left. So ECU misses a chance to tie it. Right, another error by the Pirates. Well, celebrating its 11th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And to date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Well, not the start that the home team wanted, ECU. No, they've been their own worst enemy in terms of errors and, just, I don't know, penalties of aggression timeout called by Temple didn't like the set out. Temple yeah first charge timeout so we'll break with a minute 24 left in this first quarter and Temple leading it three nothing So out of Temple's first time out, they take over here at their own 23-yard line. And look at the ball control. Temple only 24 yards. Of course, they've gotten a lot of yardage with all the penalty yardage from ECU. 65 of those tonight. East Carolina, 78 yards. 39 of those came, though, on that one run by Hairston. And the Owls are a slow-starting team. They've only scored 27 points. Actually make it 30 now in the first quarter so far this season. Looking to throw on first down. Walker going deep and overshoots the intended receiver at the 35-yard line. Trying to get it to Adonis Jennings, but I like the idea of taking a shot down here on first down. That's going to loosen up that defense a little bit, and it'll make those secondary guys think twice before joining the party against the run. Walker hands off. Thomas running left, cuts it back upfield. Stutter steps across the 30, now breaks all the way across the 45 and then brought down from behind by Ray Tillman, a 19-yard run. And he really got stopped by his tight end, Colin Thompson, as much as anything else. He almost got the edge, and then he cuts it back. And that's the thing with the vision of a cutback runner. He can bounce out and cut it back, and then you see his own guy kind of Impeded his progress. Thompson, the tight end, trying to get down there and get a little, uh, give him a little help, and instead uh, got his fingers in the in the cake. Rockwell Armstead has been dealing with a hamstring issue now, in as the tailback, first down 
Owls from their 47. Walker lets it go to the far side. Has a man open there. Did he get it in bounds? No. Robbie Anderson targeted for the first time tonight. Could not bring it down in bounds. Boy, Anderson had a nice double move, an out and up, and he was wide open. Got behind Josh Hawkins, and P.J. Walker is going to hate himself in the morning when he watches this play over again because all he had to do was lead it inside a little bit more, and that's a huge play. In fact, with a good throw, Anderson's going to put six points on the board with that one. Walker now two of nine through the air for just 11 yards, and no question Anderson did not get a foot down. Two of five, that is, through the air, Walker. Broke. Stayed up. Yep, that's Armstead, who broke a tackle at the 45 and is able to get about another five or six yards out of that. Damage Bailey looked like he had him. Yeah, and I think the rest of the Pirate defense thought he had him, too. And that's, if you let up like that, that back can bust it out and go the other way. This is just a great effort by Armstead, the true freshman back, of maintaining balance and continuing to fight through the play. Well, we come to the end of the first quarter. The only points, the 28-yard field goal from Temple's Austin Jones. student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long go to espn.com forward slash taco bell to learn how to win a chance to join your school student section at the college football playoff we begin the second quarter from greenville north carolina big matchup between temple ranked 22nd and unbeaten on the year against east carolina three nothing owls lead they face a third down at six from the 49 of ecu to begin this second quarter looks like the pirates are going to play coverage in this Low snap, and Walker just has to jump on it. Looks like they got it back. Walker got on it. But this has been an issue for Kyle Friend. You know, he's a Rennington award list watch guy, and, and rightly so. But every once in a while, he'll be low and to the right on a snap. And that time it was costly in a critical third down situation. Alex Starzik punting for Temple. Quay Johnson at his own 10. Boomed it. Nice punt over the head of Johnson and rolls into the end zone for the touchback. 54-yard punt. It's going to come out to the 20. Well, this game and all of ESPN's great college football action is streaming live on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Download the Watch ESPN app or go to watchespn.com. I got to watch that crazy play, Michigan, Michigan State, that final punt on uh, the Watch ESPN app. I was quite thankful for that. After you uh, finished up your game there in Manhattan, Kansas. I'm uh, not ashamed to admit I'm a Spartan fan. My dad played for Duffy mm -hmm. Doherty back in the 60s, so I come by it honestly. ECU from their own 20. With Blake Kemp at quarterback. Kemp, play action. Time now rolling out. And the lefty throws to the sideline. Jones at the 32. That is a completion. Nadell Smith on the coverage, a first down after a gain of 11. Nice little play, keeping the foot in. Very close to being out of bounds. Quick strike out to the edge. Trayvon Brown. Pushed out by Sean Chandler. ECU picking up the tempo here, Ray, after a gain of six. Well, Ray, your college football playoff projections. Yeah, no uh, partisanship here. I got the Sparties at number one. They're going to run wow. the table. Baylor, Alabama, I don't think they're going to lose again maybe until the playoffs and Stanford is quietly creeping back up they're in that number 10 spot you may be the only one in America with those four but that doesn't mean that's wrong Quay Johnson well, I've been called there. A, a prophet um, not by anybody who really knows anything but hey <laughs> I'll take it Johnson the sophomore in the Nightdale High School in North Carolina his 10th catch of the season 
I like the tempo pickup from this East Carolina football team. They need something to shake things up. Third and two. Blitz is looking like it's coming down from the bottom of the screen. Matikiewicz does a really nice job coming off the edge. See if he brings it with Wells. Looks like they got out of it. Rush four pass caught first down at the 45 first time tonight. We've seen Bryce Williams the big 6-6 tight end targeted. Yeah, and, and when Kemp's in the ball game, uh, Bryce Williams becomes a much bigger part of the offense. They'll move him all over the place. He'll line up in the backfield in the slot out wide. But when they're in the passing mode, that's fast tempo mode, he becomes Blake Kemp's best friend. Kemp quarterback draw. Hit at the 49 for a gain of four. Jared Alwan, his 36th tackle of the year for Temple. And that was a little flip of the script. That's a play that the Pan Pirates usually run with Summers in the ball game, and they do it with Kemp this time. And he got popped pretty good by Avery Williams at the end of that play. Turns and hands it off to Scott, Anthony Scott. Just inside Temple territory to the 49 before he's wrapped up by Michael Dogby, a redshirt freshman. One of the unsung guys on this Temple defense is number 41, the middle linebacker, Jared Alwan. He's done a great job stepping in and solidifying that position that allowed Tyler Matikevich to move to the outside to the will linebacker. Third and four, and he's going long and all wrapped up. Jones and Young. And I don't know. They were both battling, and I, it, usually it goes on the defense. You see what they end up calling. Pass interference. Defense number one. Automatic first down. And I, I don't know if Tavon Young got a bad deal. He certainly thinks he did on this, as they're battling down the field, and he never got his head back around. And that's why he gets the penalty. So I'm going to say that's a, a good call. If, you, if you're going to get that flag on offense, the defensive man has to have his head back looking for the football. First down, East Carolina at the 34 of Temple. And a whistle at the snap, no flag. Please reset the game clock to 11 minutes and 26 seconds. And our referee Tracy Jones wants four seconds added to the clock. Well, right now, Ray, it seems like offensively for ECU, and I, and I know Kemp and Summers complement each other well, but right now they seem to be flowing a little better with Kemp. Yeah, and I like the tempo that they picked up with Kemp in there. I think that's made a difference. Kemp hands it off to Scott. Scott breaking left, almost spun around, but stayed on his feet for a moment longer before he's swarmed under at the 27 by Avery Williams and Nate Elsmith. Seven-yard pickup, though. That's good blocking right there by the East Carolina offensive line. In particular, the left side, McKinney and Ike Harris. They, they both had a hat on their guy, and that opened it up for Harrison to get into that second level. Brings up second and short, second and three. Let's see what ECU wants to dial up here. Kemp's going to take a shot for the end zone. Leaping incomplete. Trayvon Brown, 6'2 sophomore. They're defended by the 5'11 DB, Sean Chandler, incomplete. Chandler does a great job of getting his head around on this one and finding the football. You see him look one way and then the other. And if you can't find the football, then you get your attention to the receiver's hands and you try to get your hand between his, which is exactly what Chandler did to knock it away. Ninth play of the drive for ECU. Quick strike, they try, but it's thrown by Kemp behind Trayvon Brown, incomplete. I'm not sure Kemp had the grip on the football. Tried to get it out of there so quickly. Uh, I don't think he had it. Well, fourth and three, and they're in that area, Ray. Yeah, go for it. You're at home. The kicker's already missed one. You got a little momentum going with this group. Take a chance. Try it again. This time he connects. Must have had a better grip on the football that time, Ray. Yes, definitely did. I was able to see it. 
and he was, I, I like his motion. It's so short and quick. It looks like Blake Kemp is throwing darts, and that one was a bullseye. Fourth and three, they gain eight on the pass to Trayvon Brown, and a first down at the 19 of Temple. Really nice play call there by Dave Nickel going back to the same play because Temple was playing off with their corner. Line up Bryce Williams in the backfield. Lead blocker for Scott who cuts it back. But a nice tackle by Matikevich in the open field to prevent that from being a much bigger play than the four-yard game. Matikevich does an outstanding job of keeping leverage on the football. When you're the backside linebacker, you cannot get overextended and get past where the ball is going. It's his job to close that back door, and he slammed it. Camp on second and six, play fake, a shot dangerously throw, but he, it's caught and near the end zone, but he's just a little short. Isaiah Jones, gain of 14. I tell you what, Kemp threaded this pass. Yeah, he did, and this is a pop pass. It's very difficult for the linebackers because of the run fake, and nobody gets back into that area to break it up. And they go right to the line, and a quarterback sneak for Kemp, but he did not get in. Yeah, they tried to quick snap him and catch the Temple defense not ready, but when you've got veteran players like Matt Ioannidis in the middle of that line, they're not going to fall for it. Well, on first and goal, why not take a shot like that? So second down and goal. Hand it off, Harrison, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year for Chris Hairston. And East Carolina grabs the lead with 9.02 to play in this first half. Another good job of blocking up front. Natal, the center, was able to get his head into the hole to open things up. Ike Harris had a nice block. It seems like the left side of the line is where the Pirates have been able to get it done more so tonight. Davis Plowman's point after is good. A 14-play drive that goes 80 yards. And this one was all set up by the throw down the sideline, getting the Pirates in that field position, then popped it over the middle, and you get to finish it off with a little touchdown run, and East Carolina takes the lead 7-3. What? Taking a 7-3 lead after a long touchdown drive, 14 plays. And just over nine minutes left in the first half. Pirates lead for the first time. 14 plays, 80 yards rate. Took five minutes and 13 seconds, which ECU is such a hurry-up offense. That's just their second scoring drive this season that's lasted more than five minutes. Yeah, and I, I like the way Blake Kemp handled the situation in that drive, and Temple hurt themselves, kept that thing going with a couple of untimely penalties. But Clemp, uh, Kemp throwing the ball down the field, kind of stretched that defense out, and they had some nice runs in it as well. Jagger Gardner and Avery Williams back deep for Temple. Gardner will take a knee. Let's send it down to Quint, who has a special guest down on the field queue. Yeah, that is Dave Mira. He's an X Games uh, legend, and he's lived here in the Greenville community for about 20 years. What does this team mean to this uh, area of North Carolina? Well, you know what? Right here in Greenville, this, this, uh, everything around here is based around the Pirates. Um, you can see by the stadium. I mean, I've seen this uh, community, uh, you know, back these guys, and even the stadium and, and how it's built up in the last 20 years. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah, it's huge crowds. You won uh, 24 medals in the X Games, mo mostly BMX. Uh, how would you best describe uh, your, your riding career? You know, my riding career, I grew up in uh, upstate New York. I started out as a young kid, never thought I would go anywhere. I looked at the magazines, watched all the pros, and next thing you know, I was competing against the best guys in the world, and then I was beating them. So, yeah, pretty crazy. Walker, deep shot, incomplete on second down. That's the fourth deep shot they've taken this and what's the future Dave you're not riding as much anymore I know you've gotten into triathlons what are your what are your future goals you know my goal I did a Lake Placid uh, Ironman this year and uh, my goal is to try to qualify for Kona World Championships out and uh, and that's the, the biggest race of the uh, triathlon world so if I can uh, do anything in that I mean it, it's it's more of a hobby for me not so much a job but uh, but I love it it's great good luck great to see you out Thank here you. appreciate it Mark 
Dave Quint, thanks very much. Hopefully Dave keeps the uh, the hobby going. It's Jihad Thomas hit hard and dropped at the 25. That's no gain. And not only that play rate, how about going deep off the fingertips of Anderson with that first play? Yeah, that was I like the idea of taking the shots, but I like even more Dimitri McGill and getting across the face of a Remington watch center, Kyle Friend, and beating him to the pass and stopping that play with authority. Third and ten, ball just across the Temple 25-yard line. Got this crowd excited, too. Deep drop, Walker, fires, caught in a first down up at the 45-yard line. That's Adonis Jennings, 21-yard gain. And what made this one work was the protection because P.J. Walker was able to sit in there and allow the time for Jennings to come open. I mean, look at him. That, that's a clean pocket right there, and any quarterback worth his salt, when you get that kind of time and that kind of room and throwing lane, you're going to find a guy that's open, and he did. Keeps the drive going. Walker hands off. Thomas looking for room, but doesn't find much. He gets back to the line of scrimmage before he's wrapped up by Fred Presley. No gain. Great discipline on the edges by this Pirate defense. Presley makes the tackle in the middle, of it, but Jihad Thomas wanted to get outside. But so far tonight, the Pirates have put an extra man, and one on each outside, off of the tight end area, and they are not letting Thomas get to the edge. Chris Temple has Notre Dame coming up next Saturday night on Halloween on ABC. Can't look ahead to that, no question. Here's Walker, throws a strike, and that's reeled it at the 40, and a spin move made by Vintel Bryant. All the way up to the 32-yard line of ECU, a 22-yard gain. Ventel Bryant, the redshirt freshman, has really stepped up and become a primary target for P.J. Walker. And he's got the big size and the ability to run after the catch, outstanding hands. He's going to be a good In fact, he might be their best receiver right now, although Robbie Anderson fans might beg to differ. Well, last week against UCF, Bryant had a team I five catches. Four of those five catches went for first downs. Two of those came on third down. He's had some big catches, the freshman. Redshirt Sam freshman out of Jefferson High School at Tampa. Yeah, East Carolina wants a little uh, break, so we'll take one with them. So we'll step aside. 621 left in this first half. Big and college football. Brought to you by Pep Boys. Trust the boys to get you there. A little of what was going on just prior to kickoff tonight here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium on a pleasant night in Greenville, North Carolina. ECU leading 22nd ranked Temple 7 3. Again, Temple 6 0, trying to go to 7 0 for the first time in school history. Now, time of possession, normally something you uh, identify with Temple, East Carolina taking a page out of that book Yeah, that big 80 play or 80 yard drive really tipped things in their favor in that regard and Temple's got to get something going on first down tonight eight plays just 13 yards on first downs a lot of them have been them shots incomplete passes they're averaging less than two yards on first down here's a pitch Thomas now hands it off he's going to throw it to the end zone incomplete Anderson the receiver Christopher threw it and a little bit underthrown. And Trayvon Simmons really made up some time as this ball's in the air because he was beat initially. But because, as you said, that ball hung up there a little bit, that allowed him to close the gap and make the play on Anderson. But Anderson initially was a good three, four yards behind everybody. So they take a shot at the end zone, but come up with nothing on first down again. Second down and 10, and out of the eye. Walker takes a shot again, and this time in and out of the hands of Vintel Bryant. He had it for a moment, but it was punched out by Trayvon Simmons right near the goal line. Well, Simmons making back-to-back -back plays from that free safety, that center field position. He saved the bacon for Rocco Scarfone because Ventrell Bryant, Ventel Bryant had him beat. 
and the throw was a little bit short. Had he been able to lay it out there a little bit longer, I don't think that Simmons would have been able to make that play. Yeah, Simmons hit definitely jarred it loose before Bryant really had possession. Third down and 10. So they'll take it two shots at the end zone the last couple of plays. Now, now call a timeout. I want to talk about this one. This is a big Second down. Charge, timeout, Temple. So there's 6.06 left, first half. 7 3 ECU leads Temple. NBA on ESPN returns. Important third down play coming here for the Temple offense. A third and ten from the ECU 32. They'd love a first down, of course, Ray, but to get within legitimate field goal distance, what, need about five yards here? Yeah, Matt Rule told us he, could, he would maybe kick from the ball being at the 30, preferred it to be at least to the 25. They like the screen pass in this type of situation. Let's see if they dial that up. So Christopher in motion. Find him at the 30-yard line at the 25. Stood up as Kit Patton. Close. Wow, with that extra effort at the end, the spot will be key. Yeah, Darius Kamishiong came in there and really kind of helped Temple with the hit from behind. Made it very close. And it looks to me like Matt Rule is going to roll the dice and go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and one. Ball just inside the 23 of ECU, and indeed, Temple breaks the huddle to go for it on fourth and short. Sharg is the fullback. Jahad Thomas, the tailback. Give it to Thomas, and he has it. Nice block by Sharga. You know, Nick Sharga is a guy who's also a middle linebacker, plays both ways. He had a key block there to clear the way. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, he came up and hit Deshaun Benton, and that's a safety. And you had Benton just stepping up into the hole, but it's a mismatch with Sharga and his size against the safety Benton. And that created the room for Thomas. The Temple converts on fourth down. And first down at the 21 of the Pirates. Walker throws out the screen pass to Robbie Anderson. He's tripped up and down at the 10. Looks like he'll have the first down to make it first and goal. Trayvon Simmons tripped him up, a gain of 11. Had some really nice blocking there. Kit Patton, he got his guy. John Christopher got his guy. And the timing of these blocks was what really made this play go. It, it just perfect timing. Boom, there. He got the cut block on the inside. That's what opened it up for Anderson. He was very close, a, a shoestring away from busting that one out the back end. Brings Sharga right back in there as the fullback on first and goal from the nine. Walker hands off. Thomas cuts it back. Powers his way to the close to the five. Uh, it's interesting. Nick Sharga does not go to any offensive meetings, the fullback. He just gets uh, every week. Uh, he gets told from Marcus Satterfield, the offensive coordinator, hey, this is what we're going to do this week. And, and yeah, that's all he does basically is he's a battering ram. He gets to run up in there and hit people. What linebacker wouldn't like that assignment? Bryant's the receiver at the top of the screen. Two receivers down here at the bottom. Gardner is the back, and it's a flag down near the goal line. Walker almost in, but stopped by Ray Tillman. But there's a flag back. At about the five. Illegal formation. Offense. Number 53, the right tackle is lined up in the backfield, making five plays in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Second down. So, right Leon tackle, Johnson, Leon Johnson yeah. off the line. And when you got people rushing the edge, you try to creep back as far as you can. And it's, it's really a fine line between being back too far which would be considered being in the backfield and being back far enough to gain an advantage and that time Johnson crossed the line and they had too many guys in the huddle there they're going to get another flag mm. and Matt Rule is not going to be happy about this their number one motto and saying is is that we don't beat ourselves and right now they're trying to substitution infraction off this Breaking the huddle with 12 players. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Well, Temple in the red zone tonight's run six plays for a total of six yards. 
And Matt Rule saying that he called timeout to try and avoid the penalty. Right. And he's trying to get his five yards back. And uh, good luck. An illegal formation, illegal substitution penalties back to back. And back to the illegal formation, Ray. I guess it's the imaginary line. Is what kind of the belt of the center? Yeah, where you have to line up. Helmet of the, the, the guy on the end, the remain. lineman in this case, Johnson, has to break at least the belt of the offensive center. He's the man who sets that line. And Matt Rule was trying to get his timeout uh, back then because it didn't get him yeah. what he desired. <laughs> well, that was a double whammy there. One timeout left now for Temple. And it's second and goal, but all the way back at the 16-yard line. I don't understand why they started the clock unless they are giving him his timeout back. Well, he must have. There was no timeout. Walker hit as he throws, ball in the air. It's going to go out of bounds, and then a flag there. Looks like a late hit, maybe, on the quarterback. And then another flag there where the receiver Bryant was being covered by Josh Hawkins. So it looks like we have two penalties here. Another shot over the top of this defense. Eventually, Temple hopes that'll pay off for him, but what it's going to do in the meantime is loosen up that Pirate defense. Let's see what they do with these two flags how they sort this out and the crowd uh, is getting ready for not uh, liking it <laughs> <laughs> they're already prepped to yes they're uh, letting them know in advance there were two fouls on the play personal foul roughing the passer contact to the quarterback's head number 94 defense that penalty is declined pass at the front defense number 28 is accepted so he set the penalty on Hawkins. It was roughing the pass, so there was not targeting. No targeting. Well, you can't hit the quarterback above the shoulders, in the head. And that's what happened right there. And they called a different guy. They called it on Jonathan White, but it was Montice Overton who had that penalty. And then the one on the end with Hawkins. And uh, Matt Rule says, all right, well, we got ourselves a couple of penalties. And... Temple said, well, we can do that, too, and they get two on one play, and we're right back to where we were when this whole thing started. So it was second and goal at the 16, but now it's first and goal, first and goal from the yeah. two, and this is the 12th play of this drive for Temple from the eye with Sharga the fullback, Thomas the tailback, give to Jahad Thomas, There's runs right, and he's into the end zone, touchdown. Sharga again with a nice block. And Thomas bouncing it right and into the end zone. First touchdown of the night for the Owls. And for Jahad Thomas, his team leading 11th rushing touchdown of the year. And we've been tracking the uh, bounce yards for Jahad Thomas tonight. And those, uh, you add those two to his previous total of four. He's got six so far. And generally, that's where he gets his big runs and, his, and a lot of his yardage. That time he sold it up inside very nicely, drew the defense in, and then used the speed to get to the edge. Point after, Austin Jones knocks it through. And with just under three minutes to go in the first half, Temple back up by three. And this is an ideal situation. Jahai Thomas takes it up into the gut, then busts it outside. Nobody home. He uses that speed and deception to give Temple the lead. Thank you for coming. Okay, built by the Home Depot comes to you for the first time from the campus of James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia. As Reese, Kirk, Desley, Corso, and the rest of the crew prep you for another full day of football. It all starts at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN as James Madison Dukes play the Richmond Spiders in a big FCS matchup. You know, if we look ahead a week, you got the Temple Notre Dame game in Philadelphia on Halloween night, 8 Eastern on ABC. Maybe if Temple wins this game, perhaps game day winds up in South Philadelphia. That would be great. I'd love to see that. I, I think uh, the Temple fans would love to see that as well. Where would they do it? On the steps by the Rocky uh, well, statue? That brings up a lot of uh, interesting ideas. 
for perhaps where they would go in Philadelphia. Now ECU will take over at their own 25. Of course, ECU scored a touchdown on their last possession. Ray, that was the first touchdown allowed by this very impressive Temple defense in eight quarters. Yeah, and it was a long time ago, <laughs> it seems like. You know, and this Temple defense has been outstanding throughout the course of the season, but I think East Carolina found a, I don't know if it's Achilles heel or not, but they, they were able to use the, I guess, tempo really is what set him back. Kemp the quarterback for ECU. Kemp drops back, dumps it off down to the back Hairston, and he's going to be tackled for a loss back at the 19. So that right out of the chute's going to lose six thanks to DB Sean Chandler making the tackle. And that was read immediately by this experienced veteran owl defense it didn't have a chance really from the get-go there wasn't a lot of pressure on Kemp because the defensive line for Temple sniffed out the screen right away top of the screen he got the tight end Bryce Williams they throw to him just the second catch for him in this game and he's immediately swarmed under for no gain there Q yeah Williams has been very quiet there's a handful of NFL scouts here taking this Thursday night opportunity to watch him in person it's a weak tight end class, the seniors this year. They like his versatility, the fact that he can line up as an H or a fullback. They think he's got to bulk up a little, but two catches in this first half. I expected to see him featured a little more strongly. It came in with 33 catches, second most on the ECU staff there, three TD catches. But yeah. He's really worked his, his tail off, getting uh, strength and getting better at, with his hand in the ground and blocking. Kemp on third and long, first down to midfield. Trayvon Brown had to stop, wait for it. Almost made a one-arm catch, and he gains 30 up to midfield. And he got behind the defense. Delvon Randall, the freshman safety back there, kind of bit up on the run fake, along with others. And you cannot let your eyes get off the prize. You've got to key the guy you're supposed to be king. If you get your eyes into that backfield, you can fall prey to a pass just like we saw there. So 145 to play. East Carolina does have two timeouts. This is Furlow, the freshman, just inside the 45. Matakevich a tackle after a gain of four. Another tackle for Matakevich. All over the field. Matakevich has led Temple in tackles in every game this year. He's the only FBS player to do so, though, for his team. He's had 100-plus tackles in each of his previous three seasons and on pace for another 100 this year. Kemp is going to run to the sideline and step out of bounds at the 40. About a yard shy of the first down. Picks up five. I think he gets a pretty good spot just inside the 40. Nice decision there, Kemp not throwing it into coverage as his receivers were all covered up pretty good. And they're bringing Summers into the game now. Interesting. Yeah. Summers in. That short yardage situation. I asked Coach McNeil if they would change, you know, play by play rather than series. And he said they'll do it by situation. The three is seven on third down. Summers somehow kept his feet when he was hit in the backfield by Nate L. Smith and scooted forward and is able to get the first down. And that's got to drive Phil Snow, the defensive coordinator for Temple, crazy because he called the right defense. He had a blitzer coming in, knew what was going on, and just didn't execute and finish and make the tackle, uh, Nate L. Smith. Kemp right back in at quarterback. Kemp from the pocket, drops. Isaiah Jones, usually very sure-handed. Jones hasn't really seen a lot of attention uh, thus far yet tonight in terms of balls being thrown at him. Just three catches for 30. He's the leading receiver on this team coming in with 51 grabs. He had a shot at it. He did a great job of knowing when to get turned back around and look for the football. And that's why he made this play. You see his eyes. He's able to turn and make the play on the ball. A little underthrown. And another one from Kemp that needs to be a little bit further down the field and farther outside as well. Well, we're going to talk about this. ECU got second charge timeout. They use their second timeout. Yeah, this is an interesting quandary here. It's fourth and ten. You're not in field goal range. 
but you're kind of in that no man's land at the 38. Do you want to take a shot at this and risk giving Temple decent field position, or do you try to punt them inside that tent? Well, coming up on the Land Rover halftime report, big Buckeye move at quarterback. It's official now, and AM and Ole Miss will preview that. And who is the best? The group of five. Halftime report. Land Rover halftime report coming up shortly. That's a good question. Uh, you know, you've got three teams from the American, including this Temple Owl team, Memphis, Houston, and then Toledo out of the MAC are the four front runners right now. Up to go for it on fourth and ten. Kemp throws across the middle for Williams, and the tight end has the first down. At the 16, they'll stop the clock to move the chains with 31 seconds left, a 21-yard gain. And that, what, when you have a six-foot-six six target like Williams is, you can make plays like that. They spike it to stop the clock and preserve that last timeout. Well, a few more seconds rolled off the clock. And this is uh, just throwing it up with a taller player. Watch how close Matikiewicz comes to getting a hand on this. Just missed it. 28 seconds. 28 seconds. Thank you. But when you have a, a receiver that's six six and can can jump, you can throw it up over that linebacker and not worry about it sailing into a safety's hands behind him, because Williams is going to go up and make a play on the ball. That he's a pretty good rebounder. Put a few seconds back on the clock to 28. And to the spike, second and ten from the 16. Kemp throws to the near side, and then he kept the feet in. He did. Nice grab by Isaiah Jones. That's precision right there, using every inch of the field. Kemp making the throw to the sideline. He threw it before Jones made his cut. This, that's, this is what they like and love, actually, about Blake Kemp. When he gets in a groove like he's in right now. Third and one from the seven. Kemp underneath, caught it to four and into the end zone. Touchdown, ECU. Day Decision right there, using every inch of the field. Kemp making the throw to the sideline. He threw it before Jones made his cut. This, that's, this is what they like and love, actually, about Blake Kemp. And he gets in a groove like he's in right now. Third and one. From the seven, Kemp underneath, caught it to four and into the end zone. Touchdown, ECU, Davon Grayson. Quay Johnson, that is, with the score. First touchdown catch of the season for Quay Johnson. And this, to me, was all Blake Kemp. His ability to keep it alive and his movement in the pocket bought him the time necessary for Johnson to come open. See how he dipped away there from the blitzing, or actually the rushing Ionitis. That bought him the time for Johnson to come open and get it in there. Flag on the extra point. It was knocked through. Yeah, I don't know if somebody jumped on top of somebody trying to block that thing or what they're going to call here. It was thrown by an official behind the play. By the, way, by the way, the catch for Johnson is second the of the night. was good. Personal foul. Roughing the snapper. Defense, number 58 and 51. 15 yard penalty would be enforced on the kickoff. You have to wait a second before you can the center, the snapper. Well, coming up Saturday on ESPN, we got another great matchup on College Football Primetime presented by Hilton as 15th ranked Texas A&M in Oxford to take on number 24, Ole Miss. And then at 1030, we're in Palo Alto, 10th ranked Stanford and Washington. Both games are on ESPN and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. The ECU, big drive. 13 plays, 75 yards to reclaim the lead at 14-10 with just 18 seconds left. Matt Rule's Temple Owls in at 6-0, looking to become 7-0 for the first time in school history. They're ranked 22nd, ranked for the first time since 79.
great. Temple's only been ranked in the poll four times in history, in 79, in 74, in 41, and in 36. Ah, oh, that 36 team was a good one. <laughs> they, they were in the poll for two weeks in 1936. Williams. That's Gardner's going to take it out from five yards deep. And tripped up at about the 25. With just 12 seconds left in this first half. And I wouldn't expect a whole lot out of this Owl offense, although never close the book on Jihad Thomas. I would hand it to him and see if he can't get something going for you. Wouldn't take a chance here. Ray, though, three lead changes so far here in the second quarter. And I think we've gotten the kind of football game, minus the, the messy penalties that we expected. Yeah, that's been uh, the disappointment, this kind of sloppy play. It started right away from East Carolina, and, and both teams have hurt themselves. Run for Thomas to the 27. Terrell Stanley with the tackle, and that's going to take us to the end of the first half. A lot on the line here in the American Athletic Conference tonight. Yeah, this second half, uh, stick around. I think it's going to be a bit of a barn burner if it continues the way it is back and forth. These two teams throwing haymakers. And Temple 6-0 overall, 3-0 in conference play. ECU 4-3 overall, but just a game behind Temple in the East Division at 2-1. Well, as Temple heads to the locker room, they are down by four with their unbeaten season on the line. Let's send it down to Quint with Coach Ruff and McNeil. Coach, you had a fourth and ten right there. Bryce Williams makes a reception. Well, what, what, what were your options? Uh, uh, it was, I go for it pretty much on both down, but a uh, great execution right there. Great read by Blake and Bryce is a big time player, made a big time play. What's the deal with the penalties, Coach? Yeah, just got to settle down. Early on, just a little excited about the game. And, you know, a great team. And I got to set them down. That's the first uh, objective, set them down and uh, play smart. We talked about not stopping ourselves, but we didn't do a very good job of that, that first half. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it fixed. Thank you, Coach. You are, thank you. <laughs> Coach McNeil, Q, thank you very much. You bet. 14-10, ECU leading Temple here at the half. Coming up after the break, the Land Rover Halftime Report with Adnan Verk, Joey Galloway, and Danny Cannell. Good one going here in Greenville. 14-10, Pirates at the half. Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference on ESPN2 College Football Primetime. A big game in the American East Division between East Carolina and Temple. Unbeaten Temple trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. Great to have you with us along with Quinn Kesnick and Ray Bentley. I'm Mark Neely. Ray, both teams converted a key fourth down late in the first half. It was a fourth and short for Temple and a fourth and long for ECU. Yeah, and these were critical plays to continue drives. Jahat Thomas gets behind the, the block of his big fullback, Nick Sharga. That moves the chains and leads to this touchdown by Thomas to bounce out. First really manifestation of that throughout the night. That got Temple the lead, but East Carolina came right back, converting a fourth down of their own as they get the ball to the big tight end, Bryce Williams, who had been pretty much quiet prior to that, and that led to this touchdown, the to pass to Clay Johnson. Temple converting a fourth and one, that fourth and ten completion to Bryce Williams, leading to the Johnson touchdown. Look at the first half numbers. You know, penalties were big, especially early against East Carolina. They've already exceeded what they average for a game by 13 yards and Temple not far away they're just nine under what they average for a game but total yards really big in favor of East Carolina time of possession which we thought would easily favor Temple is pretty fifth much 50 50 right and the thing about those penalties is they were at critical times too, drive killers and and things that really hurt the respective teams I'd like to see him clean that up a little bit here in the second half this is gonna be a uh, I think one of those down to the wire deals you've got Two quarterbacks for East Carolina, too, that are kind of going a little different directions. The starter, Summers, struggled, to put it frankly. But when Kemp came in, they picked up the tempo and got things going. Well, a few moments ago, Quinn had a chance to catch up with Matt Rule. Says his. Coach, what is the critical adjustment that you have to make on defense? 
Um, I, you know, we have to win third down. We're five of ten right now in third down. That you know, we're one of the best teams in the country. Third and thirteen, we give up. The other long one. If we win third down, we'll win the game. I think. What makes the difference uh, for Jihad Thomas in the second half of ball games? Well, I mean, we you know, I think we established ourselves on that second, that last drive. I mean, they're playing really good run defense. They got everyone down. We've got people wide open. We have to catch a couple of the deep balls, and it changes everything. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Well, they've been a very good second half team this season. The only time they trailed entering the fourth quarter was last week against UCF. They came back and won that. Gardner from a couple of yards deep. And he's tackled at about the 16-yard line. And I'm surprised Gardner took it out. Chandler was back there telling him, don't do it. And he ended up not having a, an extra blocker. But they'll still get the football in relative decent field position at the 17 to get things going and I think what Matt Rule uh, told Quint was uh, right on the money in terms of those deep passes they will change a ball game and I believe Temple will continue to sling it down the field play fake to Thomas Walker throwing and complete at the 32 for Saladin Major. First time they've targeted the 6'3", fifth-year senior tight end. Almost tore the hat off of the umpire there. He had to duck out of the way. And I don't know if that kind of disrupted Walker, but that was not a good throw from him. Usually, he's on target when he has the time. Watch that umpire in the middle of your screen, Nick P. Green. He almost got put by that thing. Walker 6 of 12 now through the air with 74 yards came in averaging 177 yards passing up to the 25 Thomas pulled down from behind by Fred Presley Presley's been all over the field tonight he's having a pretty good ball game from that defensive line spot covering a lot of area that gained eight third down and two Just averaging 3.3 .3 per carry tonight is Thomas. Averages 5.2 per carry coming in and wanting a flag. Yeah, I think he deserved one. Jennings. Looked like Overton got there early and bumped Jennings before that ball got there. You be the judge at home. See if you think this is interference. I thought Overton got a little bit of a bump. It was even before the end of that play, and then Overton pulled back off of it. Right oh, there. I mean, definitely. That's blatant. Yeah, that's pass interference. <laughs> Alex Starzik. Wade Johnson back at the 35 for ECU. Takes a temple roll inside the 30 and will be down. At the 26, Jerome Ray, 49-yard punt with no return. Well, we talked right at the top of the show, Ray, about the two quarterbacks for ECU, Summers and Kemp. Each has had their moment in, moments, really, in the sun in past games and done very well. Tonight, though, no question the offense seems like it's done better under Kemp. Yeah, ironically, last week it, it was the total reverse to that as... Kemp came in early, struggled a little bit. Summers came in, and he finished the ball game. Uh, this week, they get Summers to start. He struggles a little bit. Kemp came in and really ignited this offense. Hand it off. Flag going the backfield with Hairston running. Still going all the way across the 40, but the flag back at the 20. And Kevich with the tackle, but a 15-yard run is coming back through a hole. Number 67. Excuse me, number 69. 10-yard penalty. First down. And a left tackle like Harris. Yeah, that's another costly penalty because instead of a, a nice run and moving it downfield and getting in some kind of field position where you can do some things, it's going to go back the other way and put East Carolina behind the chains on this drive. And Harrison looked like he was holding his left arm gingerly. 
He's come off the field. That's the seventh penalty against ECU for 89 yards now tonight. So it's first and 20 as they play behind the chains here on their first possession of the second half. Scott hit in the backfield, slung down, slung forward, though, by praise Martin Oguike, or else it would have been a bigger loss. And Oguike is lightning fast off the edge. And a lot of times, teams won't block the backside edge on plays that are designed to go outside the other way. You can't get away from uh, with that against this Temple Owl defense. They are too fast, and they come hard off the edge on a real tight angle. Well, he slung him forward. He actually gained a yard, so it's second and 19 from the 17. Kemp goes to the far side, completed in the flat at the 15. Johnson, who had the touchdown catch late in the first half, runs after the catch for five yards. Nice little move there by uh, Johnson. Shake the defender coming up to try to make a hit on that play. That was Stephon Marshall, who's generally a pretty solid open field tackler. He got shook pretty good there. So again, Hairston on the sideline. Scott is the back. And the lefty Kemp finds the tight end Williams coming to the near side to the 35 and wrapped up at about the 37 by Stephon Marshall right near the marker, but it will be a first down for ECU. And Williams is limping off the field, but man, did he show a burst of speed. I thought there was no way he was going to get the sticks after catching this little underneath crossing route with the position that the defenders had. But I think Marshall underestimated the speed of the big man Williams. 15-yard gain. So they go from first to 20. They convert. It's first to 10 from the 37. Kemp throws again. And Hit right as the ball got there, and I think that's a good no call from what we see. Barnes, the intended receiver. It seemed like ball and defender got there right at the same time. Yeah, great timing by Chandler coming up and meeting the defender, or excuse me, the receiver just as the ball got there. Great timing. John Chandler, a sophomore out of Camden, New Jersey. There's a couple of picks this year, returned one for a touchdown. Scott. And Ionitis and also Matikevich there. That loses a yard. Ionitis making his 22nd consecutive career start. And he was one of the guys that was a youngster when Matt Rule took over. And he got to play early on, and he has developed into an unbelievably solid player that you will see on Sundays. Big guy at 6'4", 292, but has unbelievable lateral quickness and uses his hands as good as anyone I've seen. Kemp on third and 11, throws underneath. The catch is made and running for the first down. All the way to midfield is Trayvon Brown. And it looks like the Pirates have found something here, a little China route, a little shallow crosser, and they run everybody else off. And Temple is going to have to make an adjustment to sit somebody down for this because they're playing zones. They just let it go. And there is nobody in that intermediate area. It's a 15 yard gain. You have Harrison back in there now again. He left earlier on the drive kind of holding his left arm, but in there for the carry. Doesn't get much before Hassan Reddick makes the tackle, maybe a yard. I wonder if the tempo that the Pirates are using is that's going to wear down this Temple defense. Handed off to Hairston. Now coming back the other way. Here's Jones. He wants to throw. He threw last week and completed a pass to Brown for about 30 yards. But this time doesn't get the pass off and he gains six though. And Isaiah he loses Jones, six. Pardon. He had to fight the temptation to lateral that thing back to Blake Kemp. Watch him here at the end. He almost uh, <laughs> makes a foolish mistake. Yeah, he was about ready to do that, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Lost six yards, so it's third and 15. Can't pressure coming off the edge. And a strike to Jones at the 45 makes a move to the 41. He's going to be a couple of yards shy of the first down. Matikevich wrapping him up. All right, gain of 12, fourth down here, Ray. Yeah, they're going to go for it, and I would look for that shallow crossing route. It's good against both zone and man because you get him underneath the zone. And if it's man-to-man, -man, you can run away from him. But Ruffin McNeil's bringing out the punt team. Uh, he thought about it. He did. Long he and hard. hard about it. 
let's see if they got a fake punt. This is the ideal position to run one of those. And Temple leaves the defense on the field, and they'll be in a punt safe alignment to uh, try to dissuade East Carolina from going that ra that way. Gregory, two punts in the first half, averaged 41 yards and punts it away. Get that backspin on it, Mark. And. That one in the end zone yeah. touchback. The ball breaks the plane. That play is over. It doesn't matter where yeah. the players are. Rules different Moving college the to the NFL. It's a touchback. So it is a touchback. Temple will begin at their own 20. Four point lead for ECU. It's the Still nine minutes to play. Here in this third quarter from Greenville, North Carolina, the American Athletic Conference. ESPN2 College Football Primetime. Big game in the American East Division. Temple trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. ECU trying to tie Temple in the East Division race. And this is Temple's quarter. It has been at least throughout the season, Mark. Outscoring opponents 75-9 in the third quarter. And Temple's only allowed 29 points total in the second half. But as you mentioned, only nine in the third quarter. And scored over 70 but right away. Jonathan White there into the backfield. And White was on a stunt, a slant to the inside, and he busted through that gap, and there was nowhere for Thomas to go. He's seeing that left defensive tackle, and he's going to beat uh, Leon Johnson across the face and make a big play, tackle for a loss, putting Temple behind the chains. Well, it's a guy who's missed some time this year with a left ankle injury, but. It goes for a loss of three, second down at 13. Yeah, great get off there. Walker, quick strike out towards the sideline, running into his old man, is Anderson, and gets back up near the 20 for a gain of three. So they're back near the original line of scrimmage where the drive started. It's going to be third and 10. Trayvon Simmons makes yet another good defensive play. He took the blocker and shoved him back into Anderson's frame, and there was nowhere for him to go. Big third and ten. The motion to the near side. Bryant. Walker lets it go. Hit as he throws. High incomplete for the aforementioned Bryant at the 40-yard line, and it's fourth down. That's that same post route that they uh, converted a third and long on in the first half to Bryant. This time there was underneath coverage forcing P.J. Walker to throw it a little higher than he wanted to. That's a big series for this Pirate defense. Come out here and get a stop, a three and out in Temple's initial possession. Fourth three and out of the night for the Temple offense. They re-spot the ball back a yard. Have the correct spot now. Sophomore Alex Starzik running to Johnson, who's at his own 35. High punt. Fair catch called for, backing up just inside the 30 is where that's made by Johnson. 50 yard punt for Starzik with no return. Time out. See you next week, Stan. This Scion's going to bring out a. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Scion. Premium standard features that actually come standard. Weird, right? Midway through this third quarter, East Carolina leading Temple 14 to 10. From Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville. Well, take a peek at the offense here tonight. And there are some similarities here, Ray, between last year's meeting on a wet night in Philly last year. Yeah, except that uh, East Carolina hasn't turned it over five times yet. And uh, they also lead by four points. And so I think the yards have added up to uh, points for them this year, which was not the case last year. Hand off Hairston. Stephon Marshall, the first to get to him. Neither team, by the way, has turned the ball over yet tonight. So that's a part of the story so far. And I think that if we do get one, it might just be the difference maker because this is a very tight, highly contested situation right now. 
both defenses rising up here in this second half. Camp throws it to Harrison out of the backfield. Coming up to make the stop, Sean Chandler for another gain of two. Real nice breakdown tackle in open field by Chandler. Took away one side, forced the, the guy to cut inside, and then finished with his legs driving. Third and six. Look to the sideline by Kemp. Looking at Bryce Williams, he's in the slot to the right. Looks to the opposite side here to the near side. Well covered. In fact, too well covered was Jones by Sean Chandler, who draws the flag. All right. Jones made the grab anyway. And it's going to be a first down regardless. See if they want the penalty or take the play. They had that Hands underneath. The first. Defense, number three, automatic first down. They had that underneath crossing route going again. One that they'd been successful with previously, but Kemp kind of threw him a curveball and zipped it outside where he knew he had one on one coverage. I don't think he Made actually play. caught that ball. Yeah, I agree. You know, one thing we haven't had tonight either a replay is replay. You just jinx us there? Well, maybe, maybe so. <laughs> it's a handoff furlough. Did not a lot there. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage for the freshman. Looks like the halftime adjustments that Phil Snow has made with his defense are taking effect, in particular in stopping this running game from East Carolina. Phil Snow is a defensive coordinator with a lot of experience around college football and then some time in the NFL with the Lions. I, I love talking to Phil Snow. He's a, a, philo a football philosopher, I like to call him. Kemp throws it. There's our first pick. He threw it right to Matikiewicz. Hit out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And I mean, Kemp threw it right in the gut of Matikiewicz for the game's first turnover. And that doesn't surprise me. Matikiewicz from the wheel linebacker position is often asked to cover the flat to get a significant width. And you see how he looked up the receiver and then kind of timed it to get underneath at the right time and he stayed out of the field of vision of Kemp. That's a wily play right there. I don't it's, believe Kemp saw him, Mark. No, intended for Brown. You're absolutely right. Spot on, Ray. Matty Kevich just stepped right in the throwing lane and right as he turned, there it was. And that's so, the kind of play that can break something open. So our first turnover tonight on either side gives the ball to Temple at the 27 at ECU. See if they take a shot here. They've been doing it all night on first down. They were 0 for 5 in that department, thrown underneath and off the hands of Anderson. Well, I think P.J. Walker missed an opportunity. John Christopher, number 7, was wide open, and Walker did not get it to him. Let me take a look at it and watch the man on the slot coming right through there he fakes the block wide open right past the 20 yard line and walker didn't hang with him long enough so after matikevich's six career interception has set temple up second and ten quarterback draw walker and a couple of flags come down as he's brought down at the 22 and trayvon simmons yeah this is coming back holding offense Number 55, 10-yard penalty, second down. Now, Temple averages 64-yard penalties, penalty yards a game. That's going to push them up now, up over that mark. At 65 penalty yards tonight. Yeah, it's been that kind of game where each team has been their own worst enemy in a lot of situations. And this is not how you want to take advantage of a turnover or a takeaway if you're Matt Rule and the Temple Owls to find yourself in a second and 20 situation. Uh, knock yourself out of field goal range already. Yeah, they were at the 27 with a first down after the Matikevich pick. Here it's second and 20 from the 37. Walker had Thomas. He did, and Thomas had a full, uh, full speed ahead. He was ready to bust down the middle of that field. That could have been a huge play. But Walker rushed it with the pressure on him late. And you're going to see he's basically avoiding rush 
and then working his way through that pocket saw it late and just wasn't able to get enough touch on it and a little too uh, far out in front and a little too hot for Thomas to handle that was a big miss because that would have been a huge play third and 20 they're just two of eight on third down tonight and the flags fly and it was just uh, I think a false start on the center Kyle friend looked like he double clutched it a little bit snap infraction offense number 79 five yard penalty yep. third down. that's indeed what happened friend was second team all conference last year he's a senior and he's a whale of a ball player he's one of the few guys that at the center position that can snap the ball and reach a three technique and a three technique is a defensive lineman on the outside shoulder of the guard you've got to be really quick and have good hands and lateral movement ability to get that task done and friend can do it eight penalties for 70 yards now tonight against temple it makes it a third and 25 walker underneath bryant brought down at the 35 a good tackle by scarfone and temple's gonna have to pump this one and try to gain a little field position as it looks like this second half is turning into a bit of a field position battle at least in the uh, he's lining up for a field goal well Jones is by that long this year is 40 yards you're looking at a 52 yard attempt off the left hash a lot of times he's come out low and can be blocked and the Pirates have blocked their share ball away doesn't quite have the distance short now they took a shot but they come up empty after the Matikavich interception had a first down at the 27 at ECU and come away with no points Top 10 rankings brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Ohio State still the top team, but Ray, right now, you like the team that's ranked seventh, Michigan State. Yeah, I don't understand how they dropped from number two where they were uh, when they've kind of been on a similar path as Ohio State. It's uh, mind boggling how they still don't get the respect nationally after having four out of the last five seasons with 11 wins. Finishing the top four, four last year. If we extend it out to the AP Top 25, you have the American Athletic Conference with three teams in the Top 25, which includes Memphis at 18. They, of course, have a great win against Old Miss. Houston at 21. This Temple team at 22. Temple ranked for the first time since 1979. And trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history with a win tonight. Could not capitalize on the first turnover of the game and now ECU gets it back and a completed pass on first down up near the 43 to Davon Grayson an eight-yard pickup and that's what Blake Kemp can do to you he's uh, precision surgeon like with these short passes it's very difficult to defend Kemp near side grabbed at midfield Trayvon Brown, who's ridden out of bounds and down by Tavon Young. That's a 10-yard gain. And Kemp has been extremely accurate with the ball tonight. 20 out of 28 thus far. Brown's a guy who had to miss the first three games of the season due to a suspension, but Ruffin McNeil told us a few weeks ago he likes Brown because he's, quote, he makes grown man plays. <laughs> Love to have grown men out there. Jones almost breaking free again. A flag comes flying in. Had a Kevich and Alwan eventually wrestling him down. And that's going to come back. Holding offense, number 80. 10 yard penalty. First down. Against Bryce Williams. Quint has more down on the field. Yeah, the backstory on Blake Kemp, lefty, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, went to a Juco, came here, and was expected to be the backup this year behind Kurt Bankert, but uh, an ACL injury in August to Bankert promoted Kemp to the starter. This is a, a player, Kemp, who played tight end his junior year of high school, and then he broke his collarbone uh, while playing for the junior college. So he didn't get many reps over those years. Started the season opener against Towson, 
as uh, Ray mentioned, high percentage thrower, nearly 80% in that game. Some question his ability, though, to throw the ball down the field. And tonight, 21 to 29. Here's a run left for Hairston. Wrapped up at the 40, a few yards shy of the first down. That's a 10 yard gain. Well, th this season's been a, a kind of a quarterback roller coaster. Of course, they're trying to replace Shane Card, who was one of the best quarterbacks yes. in, in college football, quite frankly, the last couple of years. Thought it was going to be Banker at the ACL tear, go to Kemp. Summers was a guy that they were going to have play wideouts. Yeah, he came over to, to do just that, and he needed depth at quarterback, and boy, they found a good one in Summers. Hairston. Almost. it through. He couldn't quite keep his balance, but he does have the first down. He should have it at the 36. Yeah, that was a really nice play, hustling from the back side by Brandon Chudnoff. He just got the ankle, uh, the shoestring of Hairston, or he could have come out the other end of that. Kemp, middle of the field. It is caught at the 34. That's Steven Baggett tied in with his first catch. Just a gain of two. Fifth catch of the season for Baggett. And Temple is rolling guys through on that defensive front to try to give them rest because this tempo of this offense is wearing people out. Kemp looking. Drops at the 37 by Trayvon Brown. Defended by Stephon Marshall. Yeah, Kemp missed an opportunity there. The linebackers had not gotten a lot of depth in their drop, and there was second-level receivers coming open, and he just pitched it down underneath. And that's one of the issues, too, I think, with Kemp that will get better as he continues to play this game. Just patience to let things develop and hit some of the longer throws. And third and eight. They're eight of 14 on third down tonight. Incomplete, a little contact there, and then... Maybe some very late on Jones from Alex Wells. No flags. Boy, there was an all-out blitz coming from Temple on this one. And uh, the guy that got free was Ioannidis, who was initially trying just to pick somebody to free up someone else. And then you see the business at the end. I, I don't think that should have been a flag on number 35 Nate D Smith that's just incidental the guys you know bumping around at the end of a play <laughs> I like it like that you can kind of throw a little well, sneaky elbow if you throw, have to though a little chicken bone every once in a while so fourth down they try to pin him in with the punt from Worth Gregory and rolling and they're going to down it at the one it's where the ball is and he he drops the nose of that ball and kicks it with backspin, and it worked well. Deshaun Amos able to down it right about the one. This is what you call being lucky. Because <laughs> he had no business being able to stop that thing, but yet he did. Well, after tonight's Pac-12 showdown on ESPN, keep it locked into Sports Center at night. SVP will have a complete post-game wrap-up plus highlights and reaction from the Seahawks 49ers game. Sports Center at night kicking off right after Cal UCLA on ESPN and streaming live on Watch ESPN. Wow, the simple offense has their work cut out for them here. And they do. You see East Carolina dominating in terms of yards, time of possession, plays run. But the scoreboard is a lot closer than what those numbers are. Walker to throw out of his end zone on first down and a strike to the 10-yard line. Roman Deloach, his first catch tonight. And it gains about eight. I like that play call. You know, they've been taking shots on first downs. This time they run just a quick curl, a little bit of a comeback on the outside, and the timing from Walker was immaculate. Deloach, a big guy, 6'4", 215-pound junior out of Hampton, Virginia. And the side judge blew his whistle and ran 50 yards over there to talk to the referee. Worried uh, there is a clock issue and it's his responsibility to keep the time on the field and make sure that the scoreboard reflects the accurate time. And that rules out six and zero, oh, trying to go to seven and zero oh for the first time in school history.
please start the clock on my signal. Thank you. Second day. Okay. Yeah, there was no reason to stop the clock there. <laughs> well, there's the signal. It's running. That's stuffed Zeke Bigger. And everybody pushing back Jahad Thomas. And he tried to run power. They pulled the offside guard and led with a fullback up into that pile. And Bigger sniffed it out, shot through a little bit of a seam, and stopped it cold. Third and two up come here. Clock running just 40 seconds to go, third quarter. Time to get Walker on the edge. Haven't seen a lot of bootleg, which they showed quite a bit of coming into this ball game. Walker throws. That's deflected. We're caught at the 14. How did it get there? I have no idea. Robbie Anderson. That wounded duck somehow found its target. <laughs> That's amazing because it went from a spiral to a kind of an end over end rotation and still got there and You see it, it's it's hit it actually hit him in the helmet Stanley Stanley using his head there, but to no avail But Anderson with the crazy catch And that ends the third quarter no scoring in the third quarter a quarter that had been dominated by Temple this season, but no scoring, and it stays 14 10. This well, a crazy play to end the third quarter, deflected off the helmet of Terrell Stanley, and somehow Ray had found Robbie Anderson. Yeah, and those are the kind of plays where it moved the chains for Temple. You can win championships on bouncing balls off of people's heads. Well, look at the rushing yards tonight. No question that ECU has done a great job containing Jahad Thomas. Without a doubt. Got to give Rick Smith, defensive coordinator, a lot of credit. He switched his schemes a little bit. He's got men on the outside edge, not allowing the bounce out. Thomas with just six bounce out yards. First play of the fourth quarter. And it's Walker letting it go. And now here at the 35-yard line, Anderson. Wow, all the way across the 40 up to the 41. Anderson is an interesting story himself. He had to sit out last year for academic reasons and went down to a, a college down in Orlando, Valencia Community College, and got himself an associate degree. Took six classes during that semester and then worked in both summer sessions to get himself eligible. And he's been a huge part of this offense thus far this year. It's a 28 yard gain. First down from the 42. Play fake to Thomas. Here's a Walker throw and wide play. open. Completed to Deloach. He's inside the 30 down the sideline oh. still and an ankle tackle may have prevented a touchdown He's tackled at the 12, but there is a flag a flag back in midfield receiver downfield mm. Offense number 55 Five yard penalty well, first let's down. see who got this Brian too Carter. Far. Yeah, he had the holding penalty earlier and gets caught downfield on this one this is the same exact plays the right guard you see him he's locked up and he just he was a good five six yards downfield now the in his defense the offensive line is blocking run and the quarterback has a run pass option he looks at the conflict player that they're reading and if he commits to run he can pull it and throw the pass uh, and it's it's really uh, the offensive line you're in a quandary it wasn't really Carter's fault well, it negates a big play in the ninth penalty tonight against the Owls. Screen pass set up. Thomas somehow makes a couple of crazy moves and advances it all the way up near the 48-yard line. They look like they had him dead to rights at the 35, and two ECU players left in his wake are still down. I'll tell you what, he hurt my transmission going from forward to reverse than that jump hop that he did. That's just amazing athleticism from Jihad Thomas. One of the ECU out. players popped up, but one still down. Trayvon Simmons. We'll take a break here with the injury, but watch this. Jihad Thomas throwing it in reverse. We live in a world of mobile technology. 
Starting safety Trayvon Simmons was able to leave under his own power. That's important for ECU Ray because they're a little thin in the secondary. That they are, and they've already lost uh, Terrell Richardson in this ball game. So Dominique Lennon, the senior, comes in number 31, playing that free safety in the middle. But well, the way Simmons was walking around, I think he'll be back in. This drive started at the two. It's a second and five. Temple at their own 47. There's the boot. Walker lets it fly to the far side, far over the head of Deloach. And that's great discipline by the contain man for East Carolina, staying home and putting that pressure on P.J. Walker, forcing him to throw it away. Deloach was the receiver who caught the pass that went for 45 yards that was brought back to the ineligible lineman downfield. And they might come back to that one right here. It's a... a long developing deep crossing route that they had hit Anderson on previously see if they go to that again in motion Christopher now goes back to the far side Walker on third down and five and that hit to the fender right in the midsection bigger came out yeah, hit him between the fours <laughs> and incomplete fourth down and bigger had jumped up in the air to try and bat it down, and it hit him right in the chest. And he wasn't able to get his hands down quick enough to make a play on the football, but nonetheless, he broke it up, forcing this punt. Well, it is to fits. That, that was the fastball. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, the one finger, I saw it. Johnson back to receive this punt. And P.J. Walker can hum himself a fastball. Mm -hmm. Timeout called by East Carolina. Timeout. So they use their first. Yeah, first charge timeout. That's a bad use of a timeout. Could be costly. We'll see. 13-32 to play. ECU leads at 14-10. ESPN College Football. Brought to you by Buick. Proud partner of the NCAA. Ray, ECU used the timeout. Perhaps Ruffin McNeil was smelling something there with the ball around midfield. Yeah, they had punt return on, and in the middle of the field with fourth and five, I think he, he rethought him, his deal in terms of what they had out there, and to avoid the fake and, and protect against it better, they came out now with the regular defense in a safe look. So I'm going to recant and say that that was a good timeout. Fair catch called for by Johnson at the 12. 39-yard punt. Starzik with no return. Well, Saturday on ABC, it's college football presented by K Jewelers. Number six and unbeaten Clemson squares off against the Canes. And then on Saturday night, football presented by Walmart. Number one, Ohio State takes on Rutgers. Clemson, Miami at noon Eastern. Then Ohio State, Rutgers at 8 on ABC. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Worst starting field position of the night for ECU from their own 12-yard line. It's Blake Kemp back out there. He has been the primary quarterback tonight for East Carolina. He's been pretty good, too. 23 of 33 for 199. One touchdown, one pick. We have Williams in the backfield to block for Scott. Matt Ioannidis did an outstanding job. They were on a bit of a stunt. And they, they go lateral more than upfield when they slant that defensive line. And Ioannidis was able to get across the face of the man he was working on and fill that hole. Two minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Kemp throws and finds Jones. Takes a seat at the 34, 22-yard game. It's a really nice throw. Jones runs that post route, and Jared Alwan took a nice drop. The middle linebacker, you see him. He's going to be right in the throwing lane. It's just too good of a throw. First down for the Pirates at their 33. Kemp keeps it. They do that just enough, I guess, Ray, to keep him honest, because that's, you know, normally yeah, Summers they, is the running quarterback. They force you to have the guy, somebody be assigned to the quarterback, and in that case, it was Praise Martin of Wike, and he stayed true to his assignment, stopped it for a two-yard game. 
Numbers for Kemp tonight, not bad. 24-34 over 220, 221. Whatever it takes. Well, again, quarterback draw, and he broke free for a moment. Wrapped up by Marshall at the 43 and close to that first down. That was a key play by Marshall getting over there because Kemp almost busted through. He got a nice block from his running back to kind of clear the way up. Boom, right there, hitting Matikevich right in the jaw. That's a nice play by a guy who usually is in there to run the football with the quarterback run game, turns into a blocker. Well, here's the first down. Find Williams, the tight end. Immediately enveloped there at the 45 for just a gain of two. Let me give Anthony Scott the credit for that block on the last play. And now you, you wonder what... They, they've slowed down the tempo now. And I, I think they're better off, they being East Carolina, when they go a little faster. Kemp, Jones, first down to the 45 at Temple. Jared Alwan gained a 10. They're going to the, really the number one receiver here, Ray, Isaiah Jones. Yeah, and they're working him right now, and uh, a lot of stuff kind of over the middle. And Jones at 6'1", 197, has the, the frame and the heft to go in there and take the punishment. He got it from Alwan for sure, but he's also extremely athletic. That ball was a little high, and he still reached up, and it was behind him, and he still snagged it. Give it to Scott, come in right. Twist down at the 45, the they lost it. Or was it down? Let's see, no. It might have been down, but I didn't hear a whistle. And they say Temple has it. It's the second turnover. Recovered by the the ball game, and this one is key. You're gonna get a, a counter Oh, yo, where the guard and the tight end pull around. And let's see when this ball comes out. Oh, it, it was knocked out on the backside by Stefan Marshall. With a reach around right there. He gets it out clean. And this is laying on the ground, and then it's a mad scramble for it. <laughs> it ends up between the legs. Yep, of, that's the best view there in, of Jacob Martin. But that's definitely a fumble. I, I can't imagine uh, that being overturned or even looked at necessarily. So the second turnover committed by East Carolina. They both come here in the second half. That was one of the things that Matt Rule and Phil Snow point of emphasis. But yeah, that's just a nice slap down, uh, reaching out for the ball by Stephon Marshall, forcing that turnover. Temple could not take advantage of the first turnover. From ECU. There's your bounce. There is Thomas. Cuts it back. Makes a spin move and down at the 47. Gain of eight. Tackle for Ray Tillman. This is the time of the game where Thomas takes over. He did so last week against East Carolina, fourth quarter. And a, a game that they were behind on. And he busts out for two long touchdowns in that fourth quarter to put it away nicely in a 30 to 16 win for these Temple Owls. On second and two, he gets it again and will have the first down inside right about the 45. You can see the East Carolina defense. They have two guys in what I call a wide nine technique where they are outside on the edge and their sole responsibility is to wait and be patient and make sure Thomas doesn't bounce the thing out and they've done an outstanding job of that tonight. Walker looking to throw. Fires it to the near side and at the 32 off the hands of Robbie Anderson incomplete. And just off the fingertips of Anderson, and it appeared to me he mistimed his jump a little bit. That's that play that's been successful several times, the deep crossing route. He flattened it out this time because the corner was sitting waiting for him. And just slightly overthrown by P.J. Walker. So it's second and ten. The ECU defense has only allowed three points off the last five turnovers. 
That dates back three games to the BYU contest, but a man wide open for the first down to the 25-yard line is Kip Patton, the tight end. And that's that pop pass that's becoming so popular uh, in all football. You see it in the NFL every sun Sunday. It's a run fake and then a, a quick throw down the field by the quarterback. And the, the quarterback is the only one who knows that's going to happen. 21-yard gain, first down, dump off the screen pass, Thomas. Ridden down from behind at the 17-yard line. In the open field, the first man rarely gets even a hand on Jihad Thomas. That time, it was Zeke Vigor who just flew right by and waved and missed. Fred Presley able to come back and make the tackle. Presley's had a nice game yeah, time. Yeah, impressive. He's been a really hustling. A lot of the plays he's made have been similar to that one where he had to run himself a long ways. And He's a big cat at 6'3", 271. Anderson, the receiver, set up for the screen pass, caught, but immediately hit after making that catch at the 20 by Deshaun Amos. Great play by Amos. I mean, he just stuffed the man who was trying to block him and basically used that man to jam him into Anderson and stop all progress. Third and four. From the ECU 19. And Temple needs a touchdown to, to regain the lead. Now, a field goal, they, they take that because that would put them within a field goal of taking the lead, but they want touchdown on this drive. As you see, they're just 3 of 11 on third down tonight. Walker from the pocket. There is a flag and a leaping attempt in the end zone by Shipman, but overthrown, but the flag is at the 20. Oh, and P.J. Walker missed a, a, an opportunity to move the chains. He had John Christopher wide open on an inside cutting route, and he opted to throw the seven route the corner. Another illegal shift or alignment. An illegal shift. Well, neither team's going to be happy with all the penalties at the end of the night. No, there'll be some extra uh, reinforcement. Shift. Offense, two players moving without resetting. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. And that rule is, is what's going on here. He's just befuddled by his team's performance and all these penalties. That is stuff that you don't usually see this time of year. Austin Jones has hit from 28, missed from 52. This is a 37-yard attempt. Off the right hash to try to make it a one-point game. Still 7.30 to play. It's away with plenty of distance, but wide right. Jones' second miss of the night. So he's missed from 52 and now from 37, and it stays 14-10 ECU. Ohio State, Rutgers, Saturday. Just under seven and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. 14-10 ECU leading Temple. Let's take a look at tonight's AT&T strong performance. And Bryce Williams, the tight end. Five catches tonight, Ray, but two big ones. One on fourth and one on third down. Yeah, that was the fourth down one that converted. And here's the third down one. Uh, one that I thought there was no way he would get the chains. Really impressed me with the speed to the edge. And he... He's definitely the strong performer here tonight at that tight end position. And they're going to need him now. This is a critical drive. 724 left. East Carolina can get her down the field. They can make it very difficult. They, have, they being Temple, have to score a touchdown to retake the lead here. Again, Temple 6-0, trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. Right now, trailing by 4, 724 to go. ECU... From their own 20, Summers now in the game, and he throws a screen pass. It's going to go for a loss to Trayvon Brown. That'll lose a couple. Tavon Young coming up to make the lick. Yeah, this play was kind of messed up from the beginning. They blew the backfield action where there was no fake. And so with the back going the wrong way, the defense immediately saw what was up. And taking advantage of that was Young coming up making an easy tackle for a loss. We haven't seen a lot of Summers tonight, Ray, but we have seen him throw a couple of times on first down tonight like that. But this is what 
ECU fans are more used to seeing with the run up to the 25 again is seven tackled by Stephon Marshall and it's obvious to me that Ruffin McNeil's strategy now is to run the football try and burn up time off the clock and that's why he had Summers in there now you get into a passing situation and he's gonna bring Blake Kemp in to handle that part of it down third and five Kemp going to the far side and incomplete right at the marker and intended for Brown Kemp double clutched that thing and that's why it was incomplete I don't know if he didn't have the right grip on the football or if he didn't think the receiver would be turned around quickly enough but for whatever reason he double clutched it watch how he, do, he does that and, and that's what throws the timing off and it certainly gave Sean Chandler time to get in there and break that thing up you know Ray we've seen him kind of lose the handle on the ball a few times tonight maybe that was another case there he just maybe had a real well grip be. yeah worth Gregory and that's blocked Thought we might get one tonight, but it takes an ECU roll. That was Hassan Reddick who shot through there, it looked like to me, and got the hand up. There is a, uh, it's a holding call. Flag at the 30. I don't know. I see the holding signal from the referee, but he didn't point in uh, a particular direction. Might have been Finch that got the hand on that. For Temple. Who is the kick? Holding. Receiving team, number 37. 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the end of the kick. Timeout. So that comes at the end of the kick. Partially blocked punt here. We knew this may be something Temple was going to try to do tonight. Yeah, they were talked about going after one, and you see right there, big number 56, Sharif Finch. Gets the hand on it, but it didn't really do Temple a whole lot of good. Well, this week, College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, comes to you for the first time from the campus of James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Reese Kirk, Desley, Corso, and the rest of the crew prep you for another full day of football. The Dukes hosting the Richmond Spiders in a big FCS matchup. Well, that punt turned out pretty well for East Carolina. Went 36 yards, add 10 more. That's a 46-yard net. Yeah, 10 on the penalty, so they begin at their own 29. Unbeaten Temple at 6-0, trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. That's dropped by Robbie Anderson. And not the best throw there from P.J. Walker. You have to be right on the money with those screen passes so your guy can you know, catch it and make an advance. Nice night here in Greenville, North Carolina. Great to have you along with us. With Quick Pesnick, Ray Bentley, I'm Mark Neely. Huge game here in the American Athletic Conference. 6-0 Temple, 3-0 in conference. East Carolina, 4-3 overall, but 2-1 in conference right on the heels of the Owls. There is a flag, but here is Thomas with a first down run to the 41. Yeah, I think they're going to get Shabazz Ahmed in the hole. Personal foul. Shot Ooh. block. Yeah. It's offense, number 75 and number 78. 15-yard penalty. You got it, the combo. Down. Yeah, I, I saw Ahmed on the ground after that play, and they threw the flag right in his direction. It's the combo block. You can't have one guy high on a guy and another guy come in and block him low. It's really a, a player protection type of situation. And look at that. 11 penalties, 100 yards tonight for the Temple Owls. And that is not Matt Rule football, and I know he's going to be quite upset about that. They came into this game averaging 64 penalty yards per game. Puts them behind the chains. It's second and 24 back at their own 15. Walker from the clean pocket fires in a strike. 35 40 breaking free. Here comes Anderson. They catch up to him at the 35 and a long gainer before Scarfone makes the stop a 51 yard pickup. And if Shippen would have gotten out of his way, he could have gone to the house. Brandon Shippen was in there trying to help, but he, kind of, he got in the way. And this is the play that's worked well for them tonight. Again, great protection. And a little seam there. And now he's got, he's behind everybody, but he runs into his own man 
And had he not run into Brandon Shippen, the Anderson would have been to the house. The key on that whole deal, though, was the protection P.J. Walker had to let that longer route develop. That's right. Trayvon Simmons, by the way, down for ECU. They're attending to him. He was down earlier, came back in the game. But a 51-yard gain. They work on the sophomore Simmons. Ray, this is the fourth time in school history Temple has been 6-0 to start a season. The first time, you remember 1935 when they lost to Michigan State 12-7. Yes. That ended that streak. In 1945, they started 6-0. Lost to Penn State. Of course, they did beat Penn State this year for the first time since 1941. And then in 1974, started 6-0, lost to Cincinnati by two. Trying to go to 7-0 for the first time in school history. They're ranked 22nd coming in tonight. First time they've been ranked since 1979. Yeah, and you see what's at stake with those standings. East Carolina it controls their own destiny in the American East Division. They knock off Temple, and that puts them right up there in first place. And for the first time ever, the American Conference will have a championship game on December 5th. Yes. Well, for Temple, and really for ECU, you, you think about a lot of things. The penalties have been a big story tonight on both sides. But for Temple, a couple of missed field goals. The one from 52, you can understand. Right. The right. one from 37, a possession or two ago. A big deal because right now if they had those points a field goal could give them the lead but right now they need a touchdown to do that. Interestingly Mark both of those field goal attempts came after Temple takeaways the only two turnovers in the ball game and East Carolina was able to rise up and escape those situations without giving up any points. Well, they continue to attend to Trayvon Simmons. Yeah. Ruffin McNeil is out there checking on his guy. I love the way Re uh, Ruffin runs this program. He talks about having 125 sons, and he's the father uh, figure in this deal. And he legitimately views it that way and cares about these guys, and it's manifested in the way he treats them and, and the way he disciplines and the, the way he tries to not only turn them into good football players but into excellent citizens as well. Just a great man. I love talking to him. He yeah. said something the last time we chatted. I always remember he said, service is the rent we pay to live here on this earth. He said that to his players, and I said, hey, that's a great message not only for football. Beautiful thing. Well, after the big gainer, Walker going to the sideline, a leaping attempt, and incomplete at the 10 for Kip Patton. They've gone to that tight end, Patton, a few times tonight and have struck gold, but not there. Yeah, Patton mistimed his leap. He, he left a little too early, and I think he wasn't, didn't quite hit the ball at the zenith. Josh Hawkins was on the coverage, but he, he jumped too soon, and that was the issue as the ball was just out of his reach. Walker fakes the handoff to Thomas, throws it out into the flat. Anderson at the 30, tripped up there. Gets to the 29. Josh Hawkins up to make the tackle for a pickup of five. P.J. Walker could not have made that play last year. That was uh, a quarterback who has developed and knows where that second drop-off read has to be. And not only knows, but knows quickly. He got it out there quickly enough that Anderson was able to do something with it once he got it. Great. If they don't make it, clock and score. Do they go for it or they settle for a field goal? Ask me after this play. <laughs> Cop it out. I like it. <laughs> I got a no field position. Walker throws first down. It's a moot point at the 20 catch by John Christopher. I would have gone for it. <laughs> but that's a nine yard gain. And that's another nice throw from PJ Walker. And I, I, they don't need play action. They're protecting so well. Let him just sit back there and, and wait till things come open. Wow, Thomas. Tackled for a loss by Fred Presley and others. Presley did a, a little swim move into that A gap. And I don't know. He's a pretty wide body dude, but he got skinny for a second there and got through that, that little seam and blew the play right up. That lost three. Clock running. Under four minutes to go. Temple has all three of their timeouts. ECU with two. In motion, Christopher now comes back to the near side. 
Walker, plenty of time. Now that time ends, and he throws. Anderson is into the end zone. Touchdown. That same post route they've been working all night long, and it, the protection is the key because P.J. Walker, when he has the time and they call that play, he can sit back there and pick you apart and wait for things to come open. And that little area in the post has been open all night, and Walker's been drilling it. You see the bottom receiver, just a simple post route breaking into the inside. Safeties are a little too deep, and that allowed... Uh, the receiver Anderson to get underneath them and then the timing on the throw is immaculate 23 yard touchdown catch Anderson's team leading fifth TD grab of the season an important extra point is up and through that makes it a three-point game it's 17 14 seven play drive 71 yards Temple trying to stay unbeaten and go to 7-0 for the first time in school history have the lead again Just 3.31 to play. The touchdown catch for Robbie Anderson. The first points of the second half for either team. And it's put Temple up 17-14. A seven-play drive. Eight up just under two and a half minutes. Anderson's uh, getting some numbers going now. Eight catches, 126 yards, including that touchdown. And it's been on those deep crossing routes like that one. The first one, and then the post. The post has been open all night, and Anderson and Walker have hooked up and taken full advantage of it. Quay Johnson's going to take a knee. So ECU, a team known for that hurry-up offense, that spread offense, Ray, have two timeouts, 331. It would seem to be... Maybe a time for Blake Kemp right here to make a big mark for himself. Yeah, and he doesn't have to get it all in one play either. And that's what Kemp does best. Surgically, methodically, with accurate short throws, can move you down the field in a hurry. And I guarantee you he's going to be looking for Williams as tight end number 80 in this drive. Williams in the slot on the near side. Kemp. Being pursued, roll it out, and lost the football. Now, is that a forward pass that goes out at the 18? Well, he was harassed by Martin Aguique, and that ball came flying forward. He does get a forward pass incomplete. And let's take a look and see how he gets this ball out of here. Initially, he is looking to his left. Nobody there, and then a little bit of a leg whip, and it was a throw, so it should be. But... Nobody in the area. It didn't go past the line of scrimmage. But there was not a receiver in the vicinity in the pass to that reached the line of scrimmage. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Second down. Well, pleading his case, Mark, but uh, there's little to argue about in this deal. I mean, he's definitely outside the tackle box as he scrambles away, but there is no receiver in the well, area. Well, he's got, he's got Jones there. But he doesn't get it to the line of scrimmage either. And that, you need to meet all of those criteria in order to dump the ball away. So he did have the receiver there. Jones was about five yards away. Now back to the action. A quick tackle. Ooh, strong one made by Jared Alwan on Quay Johnson. And a third down coming up here. Loss of a yard. And this is desperation time. Whatever play is your best play, it's time to dial that up. On third and 21. Clock run and three minutes to go. Look to the sideline by Kemp. They complete it to 20 off the hands of Jones. Fourth down. Stephon Marshall, a linebacker, covering Jones, the best receiver on the field, some could argue, and matched up very nicely. And East Carolina will have to punt this away, but they have two timeouts left. And with the, the clock stopped at 238, they can get a three and out and, and still get the football back. Wouldn't have much time. A little but bit of time left. Yep. And remember that last punt Temple got a hand on. Sharif Finch. Rushing up the middle got on it. Got and it again. got it again. 
loose ball. And who has it? If Carolina gets it, if East Carolina gets it, yeah. it's going to be their football because that's like a normal punt. If it's across the line of scrimmage. Well, the line of scrimmage was the 13. How about Finch? Getting his hand up on another one. Well, out of the pile, Temple has it. Yeah, it looks, that was looks like Bryant. The ruling on the field is a block punch recovered by the defense. First and ten, Temple. Big play by Bryant to come up with the football, but how about Sharif Finch? All right, you see the line of scrimmage is the 13-yard line. Finch is rushing right up the middle in the A-gaps. He gets through. Nobody touches him, and he splits the, the wall and gets his hand up. And that is beyond the 13. So that is a loose football on a one-yard punt. But Bryant gets in there and ends up coming up with the football in that mad scramble and really saves the day because that would have been East Carolina yes. ball. That's a would have been considered a muffed punt. Wow. Right? So Temple has it at the 15 with the three-point lead. And under two and a half minutes to go. East Carolina will burn their second timeout. Second charge timeout. ECU. So one left for the Pirates. And conceivably, Mark, they can hold them to a field goal here. It's still, and it's still be a six-point game and, and still be alive. How about this Temple defense, too? Just an outstanding second-half outfit. They've allowed just 29 second-half points all season long. Yeah, the only scoring in the second half is the Robbie Anderson 25-yard touchdown catch in this fourth quarter to give Temple the lead. Temple trying to keep their unbeaten season going to 7-0. It would be the first time in school history. And if you think back, uh, that timeout we talked about that Ruffin O'Neill took or McNeil took, excuse me, to get his punt safe team out there, get the defense out there. Kind of coming in uh, like a, a vital deal right now. Thomas trying to bounce it out. He's inside the five. Tripped up. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown. The exclamation point, Jahad Thomas. 14-yard touchdown run. He had a nice hole initially, but after that, it was all Thomas just scrambling and fighting and clawing his way. He got hit about the five-yard line and still managed to break the plane. Right there, he got the ankle hit at about the four and a half, five, but look at how he extends. No knee hits the ground, gets the ball to the, breaks the plane to the front edge of that line. That's all he needs. If you get the hand down, you're still alive. Launches himself, that ball's on the white line, that's six points. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Thomas. His team leading 12th rushing touchdown of the year. And with that extra point, Temple has scored 14 points in the last 73 seconds and lead it by 10 with 2.18 to go. Here's Thomas. And he's something else. The athleticism, getting the hand down, knowing where he's at, and sticking that ball out. It's interesting, you know, back in 2013 when this team was 2 and 10, they lost a lot of close football games and they learned valuable lessons. And that, that was the big battle cry for them, learning how to finish. They had a taste of it at 6 and 6 last year. And now this year, looks like they're going to be off to a 7-0 start with Notre Dame coming up next week. Perhaps game day in Philadelphia next week. We'll have to wait and see. Because it's looking like an unbeaten Temple team will be hosting the Fighting Irish on Halloween night at 8 Eastern on ABC. 
Yeah, two wins in Matt Rule's first season. You and I were there for the final game they played that season in Memphis and won that game. And he said, hey, that was really a crucial win. It was. It was a cl another close game, and they had lost so many single-digit games, games that they had a chance at the end, even had leads at the end. And for them to beat Memphis, which was also on a similar trajectory, was, uh, I think, uh, a watershed moment in Matt Rule's tenure here at, at Temple. Third season for Matt Rule. Guy who played linebacker at Penn State, native of State College. I knew I liked him for some reason or another. Guy who was just four years old the last time Temple was ranked. Was ranked this week. And we asked him 22. about the uh, national attention and how he's dealing with it. And he says, I hide in my office. <laughs> he won't be able to hide for much longer. That's Harrison on the backfield, 15 yard gain. You know, this Temple defense, not only leading the American Athletic Conference in so many categories, but really top 10 nationally in a lot of significant categories. Yeah, it seems like eight is their number. They're eighth in rushing yards allowed, eighth in points allowed, eighth in pass, pass efficiency, and now Ioannidis caps his night off with a sack. Third and final timeout. ECU. That was the third Temple sack of the game, and ECU uses their third and final timeout. Well, Saturday on ESPN, we have got another great matchup on college football primetime presented by Hilton. As the 15th ranked Texas A&M Aggies are in Oxford to take on 24th ranked Ole Miss at 7. And then at 10.30, at the Palo Alto for 10th ranked Stanford and Washington. Both games are on ESPN and also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Not only one matchup this weekend between ranked teams, but you've got a lot of unranked teams favored over ranked teams. It's pretty uh, amazing. Very unusual. This might be, uh, you know, they, they tried to say that last uh, weekend was moving weekend and elimination weekend. Went this might be even more scary for some teams. Like Kemp and ECU. Knee was down. Yep, catch was made, but knee down for Brown, so he's down at the 39. Game nine was not a first down, so clock continues to run. Throw to the far side. Grabbed at the 41 by Isaiah Jones. He's needing the first down. We'll be close to it. I don't think he got it, but they are stopping the clock. They're giving him the first down, so that stops the clock. A break for ECU. I was going to say they spotted it at the yeah, they, they, 48, they, they but at generous. 49 was the first down, so they do spot it correctly now. The first down with the clock rolling just over a minute to go and almost picked off by Alex Wells. Well, Wells sitting in that little safety alley reading the quarterback's eyes. And he'll have nightmares over not making that play. He yeah, has a couple of picks this right. year. And almost got his third. An incomplete pass did stop the clock with a minute eight to go. Temple leading by ten. Pitching a second half shutout. And on the run, underthrows Bishop. And that pass rush just is relentless. They come off the edge with smaller guys. It's really a interesting anomaly they, they bring Hassan Reddick off the edge at 6'1 225 they bring Nate D Smith six foot 236 uh, they, they bring the smaller guys off the edge and just speed rush Kemp and right as the ball got there so did the defender but it's hung on to by Trayvon Brown and he'll have a first down at the 41 of Temple. And these corners for this Temple defense really allow uh, Phil Snow to do a lot of things because they are lockdown type guys in Chandler and Young. You see, you can't stop the clock. No timeouts. Kemp on first down. Gives it a heave down the near sideline, and a jump ball is incomplete at the 12. Tavon Young defends Davon Grayson successfully there. 
mentioned the second half shutout being pitched by this Temple defense and you know, this score by quarter kind of shows you the story here the story of the season really by the Temple Owls only given up 29 total points in the second half all year seven ball games now drop back at the 47 it's a sound Reddick there is a flag down and an ECU player shaking up Holding Christian Matau offense number 72 penalties declined third day and Matau the center shaken up and Matau's a guy who really stabilized them at the center position a few games ago because after an injury to CJ struck they really had some issues there yeah they were hurt and they tried JT Boyd the right guard at center and that didn't work out so they moved Boyd back to his normal spot and put Matau in there and that really solidified things in their victory over Virginia Tech Matau, big 6'3", 335 pounder Well, a Temple win here. They go to 7-0. and Would be unbeaten hosting Notre Dame on Halloween night in Philadelphia. And Owl fans want to know, Ray Bentley, what you think of that matchup? Boy, that's going to be uh, one whale of a ball game. I'm not counting Temple out of anything. Uh, just the way, the, the mindset that they've developed and built and the, the work that they've put in and the senior veteran type leadership that they have and the smart coaching and the way they use people and the explosive offensive weapons that they have they're a solid football team top to bottom I mean, and they play to their defense and that's a smart thing to do and that's really Matt rules kind of philosophy you got it you know from his predecessors Al Golden and Steve Adazio uh, he was worked on both of those staffs and, and that's what they did and how they got their success at Temple and he kind of got away from it last year a lot more spread stuff not this year a whistle at the snap. Well, for the second straight week, Temple entered the fourth quarter trailing. Last week they were down 16-14. To the way to play, will be third day. They won that game 30 to 16 last week against UCF. And yeah, they got an explosive outfit at the end of the ball game, and they earned that. Mark, they they went through that two and ten season when it was the opposite. And they learn from it and they work their tails off. Kim fires near side and over the head of the intended receiver Grayson and just 17 seconds to go. Quint, what's going on down below? Well, Ray, you mentioned their uh, Temple's mental toughness and that's a sense I get from down here. There's a certain sense of identity, a confidence that's being built and, and, and a toughness. This is a team that really doesn't show much emotion. They, they kind of ride the wave and while they didn't play perfectly today, they made enough plays in the second half. Kemp heaves it towards the 15, and that is picked off by Chandler. He'll take a seat, and all I have to do is snap it once, take a knee, and this will be over. There is a flag, though, back at midfield. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Ooh. Defense, number 35, 15-yard penalty. First down. That just took Sean Chandler's yeah. third pick of the year away. Nate D. Smith's going to owe him a dinner or yeah. something. <laughs> Take a look at it, and you can see as Kemp tried to escape, he gets dumped late. And I just think that's dubious at best. Yes. I don't consider that a roughing the passer. I don't know uh, what the reason. And a lot of times they say if you drive the quarterback into the ground, that, that might have been the case that they were trying to establish, but I disagree. Final play of the game towards the end zone and that one is incomplete and that's going to do it so temple with 14 points in a 73 second span of the fourth quarter overcome a 14 10 deficit and win it 24 14 and for the first time in school history ray bentley and temple's been playing football since 1894 they're seven and oh and they've earned it and you, you look at their resume and they continue to run the table they'll have knocked off well they've already knocked off Penn State they beat a really good Cincinnati team on the road and then they got Notre Dame coming in next week uh, they should be considered possibly 
for a playoff spot. I'm, I'm going out on a limb here, but they got to do a lot of work left. But they run the table. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think they need to be considered. Quint. Thanks, uh, Coach. What was the key to, to pitch another second half shutout today? Well, our defensive kids just kept saying, "What's next?" Um, I thought uh, even the, even then going out there and blocking two punts in the second half by defensive kids, uh, we overcame shooting ourselves in the foot. A lot of credit to them. They've got a great offense, but our kids played hard. What impact did wide receiver Robbie Anderson have? Well, you know, he opened the game up for us. You know, they did a nice job of trying to take away Jihad, and, uh, you know, he made some big plays. And they were there in the first half. We just didn't kind of connect on him. It was nice to connect on him in the second half. What's it like, Coach? Temple's never been 7-0, and and you got Notre Dame coming to the, the sold-out Lincoln Financial Field next weekend. I, I couldn't be prouder of our team. Now, there's a lot of things. We weren't, didn't look like a very good football team at times tonight, but I couldn't be prouder to come here. There's a great atmosphere with a great, really good football team. Beat Virginia Tech on this field for us to fight and hang in and come back. Uh, they showed a lot of hard character. We just have to get better at some things. Mental toughness, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Rill, Q, thanks very much. Big win for Temple. They're 7-0 and and Notre Dame on the horizon in Philadelphia on Halloween night. It's been a fun one, Ray. Yes, it has impressed with the attitude and the mentality, the mindset of these Temple Owls. Our final score, Temple 24 and East Carolina 14. Coming up next here on ESPN2 Sports Center with Kevin Connors and Jay Harris. For Quint Kesnick and Ray Bentley, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks so much for sharing this one with us. Temple 7-0 for the first time in school history. And it's time for SportsCenter. So long from Greenville, North Carolina.